Hello, Peds.talk TV family. I am Dr. Mona, and on this video, I'm doing things a little bit different. I am actually doing my first vlog, and on my first vlog, I am talking about our IVF journey, or a part of it. We had our son Ryan in 2019, and as many of you may know, we had a traumatic delivery. I ended up having secondary infertility, which I found out last year, and in the podcast episode, which I am linking up here, I talk about that journey, having birth trauma, finding out that you have secondary infertility, the surgeries I had to have to repair some issues and having to make the decision to start IVF. I talk about the mindset and the view that I've created to get me through this very physically and emotionally draining journey. So if you are going through IVF or you know someone who is, I encourage you to listen to that episode because it'll give you some perspective on the things that I love that were told to me by loved ones, what I gained through the process, and what I hope to continue gain as we go through IVF. On this video, I'm going through the hormone stimulation process, all of the visits at my doctor where they look at the follicle development. You're gonna see me self-administer medications, and I'm also gonna show you how I mix medications for any of you who are new to the process. And then I also take you to the egg retrieval. Now, I'm not able to take a camera into the egg retrieval process, but the video goes through hormone stimulation to egg retrieval. I decided to do these vlogs in phases because this is how I want to cope with the journey. So sharing this is not only for you to get a behind the scenes look as to what happens when someone goes through hormone stimulation and egg retrieval, but it also is helpful for me to share this journey because I know that many are probably going to go through it or have gone through it as well. So if you are an IVF warrior, make sure you comment in the comment section. I would love uplifting messages as I continue to go through this process. This video is being released when I still have not done a transfer. I'm still waiting for results. I'm still waiting to see if a transfer is going to happen. So positive energy matters and thank you for watching. Today's March 5th and tomorrow we start our IVF journey. I have my first blood and ultrasound appointment and I'll be starting medications, hormone stimulation for an egg retrieval in 10 to 14 days. So a lot of emotions. Um, today was a very emotional one. If you follow me on Pete's Dog Talk, I have just been unable to be on stories because of the amount of thoughts in my head. Um, excitement, nerves, is this gonna work? Is this the right thing? Can we, you know, what are we doing? How am I gonna react to everything physically, emotionally? It's a lot of thoughts and I hope you enjoy the rest of this vlog on the experience with the egg retrieval. But I just wanted to kind of put this for the, you know, what's to come. We went out to celebrate, had a dinner just to celebrate this new phase of this journey in fertility. Never thought that we would be in this spot. I think most people don't. Um, realize they would be in the spot when they do fertility treatments and we'll see what happens so join me the next you know week and a half as i go through what happens with hormone stimulation for egg retrieval for ivf after a birth trauma so that's where we're at today is a march 6th so the start of hormone stimulation so for about a month and a half i had to be on birth control continuous birth control to um, basically suppress hormones. And then now I'm gonna get stimulated for 12 days. And for those of you who are not familiar, it is like a part-time job going to these doctor's appointments. I wanna show you the schedule that I got from my fertility clinic in terms of appointments for blood, ultrasound, and then how it kind of works. So the next 12 days are going to be a lot of doctor visits and the possible egg retrieval is based on how I respond to um, the hormone stimulation. If I am responding really well, they may move me up on the retrieval day. And if I need more time, they'll give me more time. But anywhere from like seven to 14 days, depending on the woman. Uh, but yes, so every day I have to go listed here to the doctor. Some of it's before work. Um, so that's crazy a little bit to do the run around for uh, a doctor's visit. But at the end of every day, I'll find out which medicines I have to give. And I will be taking medicine for the 12 days, even on days that I don't have a doctor's appointment. So day one of doctor's appointment is complete. I have to do my first day of hormone stim today and I have to call the line between five and six to find out which medicines I have to take and then self-administer. Um, but today they just checked an ultrasound to make sure my ovaries do not have any cysts on them. And then I also had to just get some blood work done to make sure my estrogen was okay. And then they'll tell me my meds. 
So day one so far going good and we'll update you all on administering meds, how to figure all that out later today. Okay, so it's story time. Um, so today's my first day of hormone stimulation. And me and my husband both got our son's stomach virus that he had a day and a half ago. So I have been vomiting for pretty much twice already. And we're still going through with the hormone stim um, just because we have to and I'm feeling okay right now. But that was a little surprise. So like I mentioned, I had to call my voicemail um, between five and six to figure out what medicines I'm taking. So I am taking 75 units of Metapure and Folistim 225 units. So first I'm gonna show you how I do Folistim. Okay, so day one was a little bit, I will say, not what I expected with the stomach virus and then the website not working, but we figured it out. So that will happen again tomorrow and um, Tuesday, and then I'll go back to the doctor on Wednesday. So for tomorrow and um, Tuesday, I'm going to do a quick sped up version of doing this versus the long outdrawn um, version that you just saw. So thank you for joining me and we'll see you tomorrow. So today is day two of my hormone stimulation. Last night I took the Menopure and Falstim. The Menopure was actually, it burned a little bit, but it wasn't bad. Um, today I feel fine. And I have to repeat those today and tomorrow night. So one of the things that is actually a little bit harder when you have a kid already is you have to take these medicines between 7 to 9 p.m. And my husband works evenings and we don't have help. Um, so my mom and dad actually came in um, for six weeks, um, overlapping with the time that I have to do this. So very helpful. Um, so I still do the bedtime routine. My mom kind of helps a little bit though with obviously like dishes and cooking and stuff. So it's been really, really nice that I was able to do that. I know not many people can do that, uh, but that's something that we tried to coordinate so that I had a little bit of backup help given the fact that my husband works a lot of evenings. So I'm going to be doing the Folistin pen again, and then I'm going to be doing the Menopure, 225 units of the Folistin, 75 units of the Menopure. That was fall stim. It actually was much quicker today because I did it yesterday. So now I'm going to do the 75 units of Menopure. That was much quicker today and I figured it would be. Every day gets better and um, just the mixing process and making sure that you don't administer it in the same locations. And they also ask that you do um, a finger width apart from the prior injection just to avoid any site reactions. So I'll do this again tomorrow. But thanks for joining me on this vlog. Hello, so today is day three of hormone stimulation injections. Tomorrow morning, I go back for an ultrasound and blood work. As a reminder, day one, I had to go and get an ultrasound where they just checked to make sure that there were no cysts on my ovaries. And then I also to just get my estrogen checked and tomorrow I'll be back in the office. I tend to get a little anxious before doctor's visits for things like this. You know, when Ryan was an infant, he had a stroke and seizures from our traumatic delivery. And, you know, every visit I'd be a little bit nervous. Um, so I'm just curious to see, is this working? What are they looking for? Um, are they going to have to adjust medications? These are all realities. As a reminder, they don't want to overstimulate you from the beginning. So they start slower, see how you're responding, see how hormones and ultrasounds are looking, and then they'll adjust medicines if they need to. So tomorrow morning I have that appointment and then my medicines may be adjusted for the next few nights of injections. But today I'm still doing the 225 of Folistim and then the 75 units of Medicure. But um, yeah, I have had a little bit of an emotional roller coaster today uh, with a lot of things going on. Um, but I know this fertility journey is going to be like that. I've been feeling so excited and optimistic. And then today I was like, well, what if it doesn't work? And I know a lot of people share that feeling. Um, I do have a glass half full mentality, but of course that doesn't mean that negativity doesn't creep in from time to time. And so I just have to retell myself that we are doing what we need to do. It'll happen. It just gotta stay positive in my mindset. Um, will this if you will, and that's all I can do. I can't control much of the situation besides following the directions from my doctor and just really hoping for the best. So here we go, um, hormone stim day three.
So that was night three. So tomorrow I'll be going to the doctor's office, updating you all on what happens there. And I will talk to you tomorrow. I am at my doctor's office for ultrasound blood work number two. Had to change the appointment time so that we can drop off Ryan to school and have a car. So I'm here much earlier than I expected to be, but here we go. So ultrasound blood work done. Um, I'm gonna get a voicemail today to tell me how much medicine I need to take for the next couple days. My next appointment is Friday, so in two days. And um, my ultrasound, they were just checking to see if there was follicle growth, and there was. They were tiny, but they're there. So that's expected, they said. So we'll see what happens um, with the next couple days and then my next appointment on Friday. So it's five o'clock, so I have to call my doctor's office to see what medicines I need to take, find out my estrogen result levels, and see what I'm gonna do for the next two days. So here we go. Thank you for calling If you are a patient with a medical emergency, please hang up and dial 911. The survey better. Welcome so they gave me my own IV mailbox. For help at any time, press star H. Please press and my own mailbox Enter number. Password and pound key. Okay, here we go. Mona A. One. New. Message. To record messages, press one. To get messages, press two. To administer new messages, Voice. Call from. Received. 1. 36 p.m. Wednesday, March 9th. 30 seconds. To listen, press 0. To save. Hi, Mona. This is Ben. Today is Wednesday, March 9th. The estrogen came back at 38. And Dr. Who would like you to increase. So you need to increase. Polystine from tonight, you're going to be injecting 300 units of the polystine. You will continue Medicare 75 units for two more days, both medications, two more days. And you're coming back on Friday, March 11, for blood test and ultrasound. So every day I go in, they check the estrogen levels, they check an ultrasound, and then they tell me what my new plan is. So today is the fourth night of medicine. So I'm gonna be taking 300 units of Folistim. I was on 225, and then I'm gonna be going through with 75 units of Menopure, which was the same amount that I was taking last time. And um, we will see another blood and ultrasound on Friday. And so we'll have to see if there'll be any adjustments, but you'll see me do the new dosing of the Folistim tonight. So that's actually the easier one because that's just the um, dialing of the pen. Um, so I'll be doing the 300 units of that and then the men appear staying the same. So I'm doing the 300 units of Folistim and 75 units of men appear. And I'm getting the hang of it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. With all of the medications, I think. Um, it's definitely a learning curve, but um, getting used to the process, I think, is used to everything you can get doing all this. Um, but I find the, the Folistim to be easiest. Um, because it's just the, the, the dose, the dosing pen. Perfect. You can see the droplet, that's what they want to see. So I am going to 300 units today. So there we go. I am at 300 units today. So let's do this. Falston is done. And the Falston actually comes in this little case. So the pen and then the little needles. They also have needles in this box that came, which is the Falston prescription. So I, I have like tons and tons of these um, microfine needles, which, you know, for more than I probably would ever need, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, so now we're gonna do the Medicare. <sighs> All done. So the Menopure burns a little bit. I think um, you may have heard that. 
I do 75 units. I had some friends who've done more units and they say it burns more. So um, maybe I'll have to up my amount of pure, but right now I'm still on 75 units. So it's just one of these vials. And the mixing is actually the same amount of, um, of the, so when you do the same amount of the sodium chloride, um, so it's gonna be one cc or one ml of this, and then if you have 75 or whatever multiple of, of that you have, it's the same amount of liquid going in. It's just more concentrated because of the, um, the powder that's in there. So it burns probably more if you have a higher dose. But I'll find out more. Um, this is my dose for the next couple nights and then I go back Friday. Uh, this has been, again, like a really interesting journey. Um, a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. I'm so excited to be doing this vlog because I wonder if maybe you have been here or maybe you are going through this journey um, or will go through this journey that I hope is helpful. Um, I definitely went into it being more hopeful and optimistic. Um, my reasoning, which I've mentioned before, is that it's anatomical. So there is an issue with my egg being able to get to the uterus um, with some complications from birth trauma. And you can listen to my podcast for more, but um, I'm hopeful that this is all gonna work. We just need to get those eggs out. We need to get um, embryos made and we need to get them inside the uterus so that they, my baby can grow. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow to show you the next day of medicine and um, injections. This is night five of injections and it's been a rough day today. Not just about this, but I work on Thursday, Thursday today and work is crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, it's, I'm actually re reducing my hours because of how stressful it is. I wanted not to, I wanted to try not to be at a place where it's that's so stressful while I go through something that's emotionally draining like IVF. Um, so starting in a few months, I'll be adjusting my schedule, but my mom also got the virus that we all had for my son. So it's been a little bit crazy. Um, and then just managing toddler life, you know, obviously this is secondary infertility. So I, we have Ryan who we were grateful for being able to get pregnant. Um, we didn't have to use IVF or fertility treatments for, for Ryan. And um, now we are doing this and he's amazing, but he's a toddler. And right now he's going through a heavy food refusal phase. He also just had that virus. So um, another night where he didn't eat dinner. Um, even with safe food. So the whole time I'm like, can we even handle another child? We obviously can, but it just feels heavy. Uh, but a lot of emotions in this IVF journey, for sure. Wondering if this is the right choice. Is this going to be worth it financially? Um, can we handle it? My parents are going to be leaving. And I'm like, literally, I have thoughts in my head, like how am I supposed to handle one kid, a dog, and then be pregnant without any help. Um, but it's just, I know a reality that many people um, face and feel, but I'm doing the 300 units of Ballastim today. Perfect. Awesome. Here we go. Three hundred of Ballastim. Here we go. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I'm going on the right side today. So yeah, um, tomorrow I have my appointment again. So I'm going to show you how I do this, and then um, the manicure, and then I have my appointment tomorrow. So here we go. So the Menopure actually burns going in, like I mentioned, and actually is burning more subsequent days, um, meaning I just feel a little sting a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, that's night five. I'm really looking forward to see what they say at the ultrasound and blood work tomorrow. Um, if they're gonna see any follicle development, I obviously have no clue what to expect, which is why I'm doing this vlog, because I feel like um, I talk, I've talked to friends and some of them are very detailed, some of them like kind of blocked out a lot of the memory, but maybe if you're in this journey, you'll be able to um, relate or know what to expect. Everyone's different as to the dosing and protocol. Uh, but yeah, I'll be updating you tomorrow on what happens at the ultrasound and if I have to adjust medicines and how everything else is going. And I need to get some rest because today was a day and I'm just so glad my mom is feeling better, Ryan's better, me and my husband, my dog all got it, my dad's the only one who hasn't gotten it, the virus, neurovirus, Please don't hit my dad and let this be done.
so I just had my ultrasound and blood work. Um, I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit sad. Uh, the ultrasound tech just said that I didn't have as many follicles as she would expect. Obviously she's not the, she's not just the only person on the care team, but, um, I only had six follicles and they were still small. Like they weren't getting, they were not as big as she would expect it, but I had four on the left and two on the right. And honestly, I had no expectations going in on what this would look like, but I didn't expect to have six. I thought maybe like, you know, I thought maybe there would be more by now. Um, but just a little sad, but what can you do? Uh, we'll find out more on adjusting the medicine and you know, how things are looking in two days when I have to go back for an ultrasound. Um, and then I have to go to work, which, you know, people have talked about this, you know, IVF being a part-time job. It really is. I mean, I had to get here at 7 a.m. And then now I have to go to my office where I'm going to see patients for the whole day. And honestly, my mind is a little bit not going to be there. Um, and that's just a reality. But I just, I hope this all makes sense and we can get our egg, little egg, follicles out, eggs out. Um, I hope six is what we need. And because, you know, with the process of them getting it out, it has to be fertilized. And then obviously there's chromosomal um, analyses. We just need one embryo. So I'm hoping for the best, but feeling a little sad today. But we'll see what happens. They're going to make sure that I have enough medicine and adjust accordingly. Um, meaning because I'm on, you know, I might run out of medicines if they increase the dose of anything. So we'll see where we're at. Um, I trust my care team. I think they're amazing. Um, but I just want to make sure that we're doing what we need to do and we'll see what they say on adjusting the medicine and where we go from here. But on my way to work and we'll update this evening before I do meds. So it's lunch break and um, I had a very emotional morning. I kept it together in patient rooms, but like I said, this fertility journey while working, um, especially in a job that requires me to take in a lot of people's emotions and worries and stuff, when I have my own worries and frustrations and fears and whatnot with IVF, um, it's a little bit harder of a day. I think it's just a reality um, with a lot of these kind of jobs. But um, I cried a lot this morning. I had residents with me, I precept. So they actually were, we like, you know, we work together, um, they see patients with me. So it actually kind of helped to uh, be able to just be in my feelings. And then I talked to some friends. I actually went on my new mom squad for my new mom survival guide. And I asked just people there, a lot of uplifting messages um, about positivity, about quality versus quantity when it comes to follicles and how I am only day six and anything can happen when they adjust medicines. They start low on the dosing of the medicines because they don't want to fry your ovaries. They don't want to hyper stimulate you and then you kill all the follicles. So my doctor started low, which makes sense. This was the first ultrasound after we went up on meds. So I have a feeling they're gonna go up on medicines again and we will see where we're at on Sunday. And so I'm trying to stay hopeful. I called my doctor, left a message just because I was in a panic mode with what the ultrasound tech was, her facial expressions, all that just got me triggered a little bit. So um, yeah, but they'll call me with what the plan is, um, but I'm staying hopeful. I mean, it's six follicles, better than zero. And it is only day six and I'm going with that and we will see what happens. What an emotional roller coaster today. So um, in the morning with the ultrasound, uh, the tech was concerned and said that, you know, we should have to talk to the doctor about it for continuing. And then I emailed my IVF coordinator and explained what happened. And she said not to worry that this is normal, that the doctor doesn't want to over overstimulate the ovaries. So she wants to start slow with medicine and then build up. So we're going up on the medicine today. But needless to say, this was a big emotional roller coaster day. I had to call the pharmacy to get refills on my Menipure because now I'm going up, I'm um, doubling the dose and I don't have enough. So I had to call by 3 p.m. to get the order in by tomorrow so that I would have enough for the weekend um, because they don't deliver on Sundays. So Thankfully, I had residents with me so that they helped um, see patients while I could be on the pharmacy. So if your pediatrician or doctor is ever late, it's probably because they're on the phone taking care of IVF meds. No, just kidding. But um, have some grace because um, I definitely was hustling to see patients, but also take care of my personal stuff. So now I'm doing um, 150 units of the Menopure and sticking with the 300 units of the Follistim. And I'll go back on Sunday to see where we're at, but I'm feeling a little better. 
Don't know what Sunday's gonna hold, but today was honestly a very difficult emotional day, which maybe you've gone through. I'm curious if you have. I actually wrote a message on my new mom survival guide, like I mentioned, um, group, just asking for support, and I sure did get that. And then I called all my, or texted all my IVF friends um, just to get support, and everyone was so supportive. So this community is amazing. I'm happy to be a part of it as hard as it is. We are the most supportive warriors I've ever met. And here we go with all 300 units and now doing the Menopure 150. So for the Menopure, you're using one vial, um, or sorry, you're still drawing up one cc or one ml of the sodium chloride solution, but now you're using two vials of the Menopure. So um, you don't use double the amount of liquid. You're still the same amount of liquid, it's just gonna be more concentrated, so it may burn more is what I hear. So here we go. Oh, that burned today. That was the 150 units of the knife here. Um, one thing that I think you may see is you are gonna to start to feel super bloated. So this is how I'm feeling. I'm obviously not pregnant, but this is all the hormones. I feel so heavy and so bloated, but that is normal. Um, that is probably the job of the hormones working, but that is how I'm feeling. Um, but yeah, I will do same doses, dosing tomorrow and then ultrasound and blood work on Sunday. I, my estrogen levels are going up, which is what they wanted to see. It was 92. Uh, and then we'll do the same thing on Sunday with the ultrasound and another estrogen level. And I'm hoping the follicles are growing. I'm hoping maybe they see some secret follicles that they didn't see today and feeling much better and just hoping for the best. That's all we can do as IVF warriors. So I feel like every day in this whole process gets more overwhelming. And you know, I'm like, I went into this with a mindset of like, this is gonna be great, this is gonna be good, we're gonna do what we need to do. But I don't know if it's the hormones, the anticipation, stress, whatever, but like, other things in life are like really irritating me that normally don't like Ryan's tantrums on like before all this were not easy but I can handle it now I just have no patience I'm like so fatigued so tired and look at this bloating that's happening I need to show you what is going on here okay this bloating is out of control which I hope means it's a good thing I don't know um and then my medicine so I had to go up on my Menopure but the pharmacy put the order in and I was supposed to get it today, it's Saturday at noon. I was supposed to get it by noon. I had a tracking number, it never came. So I checked the tracking number at like one o'clock and it said that um, tracking, tracking information will be updated. I still don't have the package and it's 7.45. Um, so then I had to call my on-call doctor and figure out what to do. And they had to call in an order to uh, specialty pharmacy that I have to go now tomorrow to pick it up. And it's just so frustrating because I already paid $700 to get that medicine that was supposed to be delivered. It never came. So hopefully maybe the UPS guy or girl's late and it's going to come here like by nine. If not, I have to go to the pharmacy tomorrow because I'm going to run out Sunday and it's a Sunday. So I have to go get that medicine. So I have enough of the 150 minute here because I only have one more vial left. It's just, it's, it's so hard in this whole process, you already don't have any control over what's gonna happen with anything, but like with the medicines, like you do all the stuff you need to do. I spent the whole afternoon trying to call the pharmacy, get the order in and now it disappeared. So I'm hoping that I get it. Um, hoping I can update the next time that I got the medicine. If not, I have to drive 40 minutes from my doctor's office tomorrow to go get the medicine so that I have enough to give. And then call the pharmacy that I ordered everything from on Monday when they open back up because it's a Sunday tomorrow to figure out what to do with the order. But it's honestly a little like overwhelming. But what are you gonna do? What do you do? Like, I mean, it's just, this is reality, right? But it's, it's overwhelming. It's tiring. I like texted my husband, I'm like, I paid, we paid the money. Like it's supposed to come and now it's not gonna come. And I have to drive a half an hour to my fertility appointment and then another 45 minutes to the specialty pharmacy because there's only two in, in the area and they're not near me. So it's just, it's tired, it's a lot. And then on top of everything that we do, you know, for motherhood life, um, it's just, it's a lot. But I'm gonna be doing the Falliston 300 and the Menopure 150 and hoping that I get that package and hoping that everything looks good on the ultrasound tomorrow.
So the manicure burns still. Um, I think that's something that you'll hear. Um, the 75 units did not, but when I've had to do the 150, so it's the 150 units and still the one cc of saline solution. Oh, it burns, but then it gets better. Um, I have been, I mean, my bloating is, ever since I started the 150, I've definitely felt more bloated, more full. Uh, I'm very curious to see what happens at this ultrasound tomorrow. I mean, physically, I'm like anticipating something working. I don't, I mean, I'm not worrying so much about the number of follicles, but I have a feeling something's growing, whether it's four or five, six follicles, whatever it is. But yes, I will see what happens with the medicine. I'm hoping that I can update you all that I got it. If not, I'll be going to that specialty pharmacy and figuring out the, um, all the uh, order that never came with my pharmacy that was supposed to deliver. So I'll be talking to you tomorrow. So bright and early, had my appointment at 8.45, but with time change, it feels very early. And then Ryan decided today, or last night, to be the night that he wakes up multiple times, even though he never really wakes up through the night. Um, he has a little cold, but I don't, you know, he was fine, but just, I think, wanted some some love. So I slept in there with him, um, but I'm so tired. But good news is that the follicles are developing. Uh, I have seven that are at least um, 10 millimeters in size. The goal is for them to be at 20 for the, and then that's probably when they're going to release. So seven that are 10 um, and the, uh, 10 millimeters are actually six that are 10, one that's seven, um, 11, and then there's three smaller ones. So. I, my medicine never came, so I have to go to the pharmacy now to go pick that up. So we'll have hopefully enough for the end of tomorrow and then wait for that package to come to take me through the rest of this um, course. So good news is that they're growing um, and then I'll get my medicine and we'll hopefully be on the right track. Hello, so this is night eight of injections and my medicines never came today. I was hoping that they would, the ones that I had ordered with that pharmacy on the refill. So I went to a specialty pharmacy after my appointment and I got enough vials to get me through Monday night with the hopes that maybe that package is gonna come tomorrow, but I don't know. But here we are doing night eight of injections. My estrogen level was 252. Um, they, they monitored that to see progression. And then um, my ultrasound, like I mentioned earlier, had some follicle development, at least 10 millimeters. So, Doing good on that standpoint, we are continuing 300 international units of the Ballastim and um, 150 units of the Menu Pure, which does burn. So here we go, I'm doing this on the left side. So that Menu Pure burned again. Um, I have gone through so much ups and downs with this, with the medicine not coming and just the follicles um, being only, you know, small the other day. I've heard every woman can respond differently. Like sometimes like overnight your follicles will grow. So I'm hoping that Tuesday's appointment is good news. We're hoping for a Thursday retrieval. So we have to see something good on Tuesday so that we can hopefully give the trigger shot on Wednesday and then retrieval on Thursday. So hoping for the best. I will be doing the same dose tomorrow and letting y'all know how I'm feeling. Still feeling bloated. Um, Obviously, mixing the medicines becomes easier every time, but the, um, the Metapure does burn because it's 150 units now, but I'm hoping for the best. Hello, I'm wearing my new name is Mommy shirt, even though I'm already mom. Tomorrow, I think, is a very big day for the ultrasound. It is night nine of injections, and then tomorrow we're going to see what progression the follicles have, and then that'll determine when the retrieval is going to be. So it's a big day in my opinion. So I'm sending all the positive vibes into the universe that things are going to be looking good. And of course, life continues to be crazy. Um, Ryan is sick again from all these daycare germs that have been going around like crazy. And then I'm actually feeling a little under the weather, like sore throat, stuffy nose. And then my mom is sick from Ryan's typhoid toddler germs. So. That has been a little bit crazy um, because I need people to be able to take care of my son um, besides me, my, that's my goal, and then my husband's working. So, you know, this is just kind of the added stress um, of IVF on top of already crazy life that we lead. So I'm doing the Folliston 300 IU and then I'm gonna be doing the 150 of the Menopure and then we're gonna hope that tomorrow the follicles are developing good. So here we go. So big day tomorrow, I am doing an ultrasound and blood work to see what the estrogen is doing and what my follicles are doing. As a reminder, I had seven follicles that were over 10 millimeters at the last ultrasound, which was on Sunday. So yesterday, 
Um, hopefully they're growing and I will update you tomorrow. <sighs> so ultrasound was okay. Um, my follicles just grow very slow. So that's a little bit disappointing, but what can you do? You can't control that. I have four that are over 14 millimeters, which are the great size. And then I have another, um, f another four that are under 14 millimeters. So they're not really counting those, but they're looking at the four. Um, they say that it can grow two millimeters a day. So likely now trigger shot would be on Thursday or Friday with retrieval on Saturday or Sunday. So that's where we're at. Um, we made a stupid mistake to book a trip after my egg retrieval in hopes that we could celebrate. And they told us that there could be plus or minus a couple days from the estimated date. We just hoped that it would be fine. So now we have to cancel that trip, which really kind of sucks, but we kind of knew it might happen. We just hoped that it would be able to be able to go. So I'm just a little bummed that I won't, we won't get our little celebrating vacation, but just want this to work and get that egg and get those embryos. So we'll see when, what the doctor says on what, what day exactly this will happen. <sighs> I've been sitting in my car for 20 minutes. I hate this process so much. <sighs> I hate it. I hate how you can't control anything. I hate it that you just really have to just leave it up to just the medicines and just monitoring. And it's just so tiring. Because life doesn't continue. There's obviously other things that happen besides fertility. And I'm just like so tired. Just don't even know what to think. And it's like hard to stay positive because you're just like for four follicles that are over 14 millimeters which means that's pretty much what they're gonna get and you don't even know how many embryos are gonna be and you just hope that this was all worth it i mean you spent all this money and time and energy and you just want it to be worth it i'm just I'm so sad see <sighs> this these ultrasound visit days are honestly a roller poster um i had a nurse who isn't very optimistic sounding. I mean, she's just, her facial expressions, this is the one I had a couple days ago that kind of scared me. So the same one again, and honestly, she just makes me feel like I'm failing. Um, and I was like, wait, things are going good. What are you talking about? And she was like, well, we have to see this may get pushed back, the retrieval until Monday. And I'm like, Monday? I mean, my I have five follicles that are over 10 millimeters, um, many of which are 14 millimeters. Um, so I was like, well, that would make sense that maybe in a couple days that they'll be able to give me the trigger shot. So my doctor's nurse called me um, to give me the instructions. They said they were very happy. My estrogen was over 500, progesterone was like 0.8, um, and then the follicles look good. So they want me to continue the Menopure 150, the um, Follistim 300 units, and then I'm starting the um, Cetratide kit. This is a kit, this is a medicine so that you don't ovulate early so that it delays the ovulation so the follicles can have some time to grow more. Um, and then I have to do this tonight, which is Tuesday night and then tomorrow night. And um, then I go back on Thursday morning. Hopefully we'll see how those are looking. I may be able to get the trigger shot on Thursday. If not, I may have to get the trigger shot on Friday with the retrieval on Saturday or Sunday respectively. But, oh man, like I'm, what I'm learning from this, from the doctor side, is um, how you approach bedside manner in terms of the way you communicate, even if it's something that you're not, you know, too happy about. What the words matter, especially when someone's already anxious. And IVF absolutely adds anxiety. <sighs> so I'm feeling much better after talking to the nurse um, on call, the nurse that called me. She was like very happy. They were like, "No, things are going good. You're doing great. I mean, you're doing everything you need to." So that really helps, and I hope that message helps you. So that was three injections today. Um, definitely really hopeful. I'm like hoping in 48 hours things are working, but that was the Follistim, Menipure, and Citratide. The Citratide um, was something new today. Um, so that is something that you wanna make sure that you follow the directions. And I'm linking all of these videos that I used on my um, show notes for the video here so that you can hopefully have it if you need it. These are really helpful to have as you're mixing medicine so you can just make sure everything's good. 
So we'll do injections again tomorrow. We're doing the same thing. Ballston 300, Menopure 150, and um, the Cetratide kit for tomorrow we'll do again. Um, and then hoping for the best on um, Thursday morning. So this is night 11 of injections. One thing I want to remind you, if you're going through this process and you're watching this before going through the process, is really don't plan anything around all of this. You know, they say the dates for the retrieval. It's totally tentative. We knew this, but we planned a trip, hoping that, you know, we'll go early. My ovaries must be okay. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And I'm, I'm slow moving in the follicle stimulation. So we had to cancel our trip to the Bahamas, which was a bummer, but totally, we knew that it would be a reality. But if you're watching this, definitely don't plan a trip. Um, you have to be very flexible with, with I have all this stuff, right? With even work, I had to call out tomorrow because I was originally supposed to go Wednesday to my doctor for a visit, but now I have to go tomorrow, which is Thursday um, for progress to see where I'm at. So I had to call out. Thankfully, I had PTO to call out, but this is a part-time job. So a little piece of advice is just be careful with um, the scheduling and just really plan that this is going to be what you have to do um, and you're not going to really want to plan anything around it. But I'm going to be doing the Ballastim 3, um, 300 IU and then I'm doing the Menopure 150 and then I have to do the Cetratide, which is um, the kit once. And then the Cetratide actually caused a bruise. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see it, but it caused a little bit of a bruise right here. So I want to make sure I don't go in that area. Um, but that was a new injection for me. So here we go. So sending a positive vibes to my ovaries and my little follicles that they're growing. Uh, not knowing anything about the progress here, meaning you just have to leave everything up to fate and hoping that the medicines work and that things are on the right track is a hard thing in IVF. I'm sure you all realize that this is something that you just really can't control. So just hoping for the best, hoping I have a nurse tomorrow who is uplifting and positive and not scaring me. Um, I already know that there is one who is very scary <laughs> um, in terms of how she communicates. So I'm just really hoping that I get a positive one. It really does help in this journey and I will update you tomorrow. Okay, so it is night 12 of injections. 12. So I have two things I want to say. The first thing is that when they say it can take 8 to 14 days for your hormone stim, believe the range. I heard friends who were like, oh yeah, it took nine days, 10 days. I am late on the way this is moving. And sometimes we compare and we're like, well, why is it me? Everyone's different. You will never know until you actually do it. So I am approaching, I'm 12 nights tonight of hormone stim. So I had to get more medicine and go to the pharmacy. So did that, Brian, all that jazz, which is what we do. And now I'm doing night 12 and I'm going to go back on Saturday. So that's going to be 14 days that night, um, and then they have to see. My right ovary, um, the follicles in the right ovary are no longer getting larger. <sighs> so that was a little bit of tough news. When we were looking today, they were like, oh, they're growing, but they're actually the same size on the right, but the left side's growing. I talked to my doctor and she said that for some people that just happens. Um, they can't say why, there's no reason to it. They just can't say why. And um, that's a little hard to swallow, if you will, um, because there's just no rhyme or reason to fertility stuff. But all I know is my left side's working, praying that we can get some follicles off that side and it's quality, um, it's a quality egg, and those will be the embryo or embryos. But um, today was another roller coaster day because I talked to my nurse, talked to the doctor. She was like, look, this happens. We still have one side, we have to monitor. We have to get those up to 18 to 22 millimeters. But my first tip is believe it when they say that it can take eight to 14 days and it's, there's no way for you to know. Uh, tip number two is lean on people and talk to fertility community, but always ask for positive uplifting stories. And it's always nice to know someone who may have been on the lower end 
um, of follicle development or may have taken longer to develop follicles like myself. Um, I don't know. I just, I talked to some friends who had only seven follicles on the day of retrieval and just got and had two embryos or one embryo. And that, that is the positivity I need um, versus the stories that people have 28, 20 follicles, you know, I'm not that person. So I just hope that by sharing my story here, you maybe are going through something similar or will and may have low follicle counts or slow progress. And I hope you don't get discouraged because I got really discouraged and the whole process has been discouraging because you just, you have no control and you're like, well, is this good? Is this bad? Like, what do we mean? What are the odds? But you just need one embryo. Remember that. So I'm going to be injecting my Follistin 300. I had to get that to the pharmacy. Um, my Minipur, I had to get more of, and then the center type. So here we go. I was telling one of my friends today that like, you know, the first few days I was feeling hopeful and the injections were fine. And now on day 12, I'm tired, tired of the injections. It's a lot. I mean, my sharps container is completely full because I have this little one right here. Let me show you this little sharps container. It is completely full now because I'm going on to 12 days. So I have to buy another one because you can't just empty it out. You have to throw away the whole container, but Saturday for day 14 is going to be an important day. We'll find out what those follicles are doing and what day our retrieve is going to be and how many follicles we have. So I'll be checking back in tomorrow for my next round of injections. So tonight is night 13 of injections. I'm going back tomorrow for the ultrasound and blood work. My last estrogen level was 950, which was great. Um, things are progressing. So hormone levels are looking good. Like I said, I'm just taking longer to get stimulated um, for the follicles. Um, continue doing the Falston 300, the Menopure 150, and then the Cetra Type kit. Today was a really great day emotionally because I took my mind off of all this and I saw some friends who were in town. As you know, we scheduled that Bahamas trip because we were like, hey, maybe we'll be on time. My advice again is do not plan any trips or things around all this. Just really focus on this because you just don't know what day you'll go for the um, egg retrieval. So we learned our lesson, um, but change gears and met up with some friends today. Saw them for a beach day, so much fun. And then also um, went out to dinner with some girlfriends. So got back by 7.30 because I have to do my injections. So they're all out and I was like, you know what? I can't go, but this is what it is. Um, so I'm gonna be doing the fall stim, the menopure, and then the Zetra type kit. So night number 13 is done. Um, tomorrow going in for the ultrasound and estrogen level blood work to see where we're at. Um, I talked to my doctor yesterday and she said that we'll see where the follicles are going and hopefully retrieval will be Monday or Tuesday, but I will update tomorrow. Hoping for a good night of follicle growth. Thinking also. Perfect. Oh yeah, the, they're growing. Yeah, good. Have a seven and even the ones on the right reacted finally. Yep. Wow, good. Ah, <sighs> so 13 nights of injections happened last night. So went back for my ultrasound and blood work. They're growing, which is amazing. Um, I have 10 follicles that they're seeing total, six of which are over 15 millimeters, and then the other four are over 10 millimeters. But um, it's good news that they're growing, and the right side actually woke up and grew from last time. So they were 14 millimeters last time, they're now 18. Um, one of which is 17. So really happy to see that finally happen. Um, we're looking at hopefully, as long as the blood work is looking good, the estrogen progesterone that um, we'll probably do retrieval on Tuesday. So I'll have to do another two nights, um, basically another night of injections trigger tomorrow and then retrieval would be on Tuesday. So I'll find out today when I listen to the voicemail. Someone donated Falistim to the clinic, so I'm just so grateful because I do not have to go to the pharmacy. I actually got two vials of Falistim, so I'll be good with my medicines, hopefully through um, the trigger shot on Sunday night. But um, I'm actually, this is the first ultrasound that I'm actually feeling good and optimistic. Um, I've had many that I'm just like, okay. Um, but I don't know, I just feel like it's coming to the end and things are moving. So I'm like, maybe my ovaries just need some time and they're procrastinators, but um, I'm feeling hopeful. 
Um, hopefully the message is good about the blood work. My, my estrogen levels were doing great. So I hope they're continuing to be over a um, thousand today and um, we'll see, but feeling good. And I just want this retrieval to happen. I was super anxious. So like I get really bad anxiety at these visits. I've always been this way. I'm a doctor and yet I still have white coat hypertension or I would say white coat anxiety. My heart rate was a hundred because I was like so freaking nervous. By the way, my resting heart rate is usually like 70. I don't, I have a high resting heart rate, 100. And I'm like, she's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm super anxious. And she's like, okay. But um, yes, I am so, so happy. I, my heart rate, I feel like I can breathe a little bit um, and taking those deep breaths on my drive home today. <sighs> so night number 14 of injections. I feel like I'm giving way more injections than I, of anyone I know. Um, I talked to my doctor's nurse today and they want to give me two more nights of injections because I, my based on my estrogen levels and the size of the follicles, we have a little more room to monitor, um, to get more up to the 18 millimeters that they like it to be before they initiate the trigger shot. So doing two more nights and then I'll be back on Monday for, uh, another ultrasound blood work. And my estrogen was in the 1500s, which was really great, um, for them. And yeah, so this is night number 14. I'm doing Follistin 300, Venipure 150, and the Cetratide kit so that I don't ovulate. So here we go. I got the green light that we are going through with the retrieval on Wednesday. My follicles were growing beautifully. God, nine follicles, 17 to 23 millimeters. Um, this was a slow process just on Tuesday. So like a week ago, I had zero follicles that were over 17 millimeters. And that was day 10 of stimulation. So I am a late stimulator. I have to do my trigger shots today and one more dose of Falston 150 today. And um, estrogen levels were on the right track. So I'm feeling really happy. Wednesday's a big day, which is two days from now. And a reminder, you're doing the trigger shot 36 hours prior to the procedure. So my procedure's at 7 a.m. Um, the timing is important for them. So they want 8 p.m. Um, that's the timing that they want. So 35 hours, 35 to 36 hours. So 8 p.m., the trigger shot, which is the preginal and the lupulide. My husband's going to help me with the preginal because it's in the buttocks. And then um, I'm doing my fall stint 150. So feeling very happy that the follicles were looking great today. They are juicy and a perfect size. And I'm just so grateful that there are nine, but I just want those high quality eggs inside. And I'm feeling really happy today. The emotional roller coaster, we're on an upward swing right now. So hoping we can continue this energy. Perfect, okay. So let's take this, put that in the shelf container. Okay, so here is the impression. No, uh, no, it's another five minutes. Are you excited? No. Okay. You have to count, it's like 20, 30 seconds. For what? Because that was the alarm for like 7.59. I just did it so we're ready. So just give it 30. God, that's a big one. Okay. You guys see the gun? 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Watch the needle. 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Okay, go. Ooh. Ooh. Did you inject it? Mm. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for your time. You can go now. It's a shitty drug <laughs> Okay, that was the Preginal. 
Now we do the Lubramide. I had a little bleeding from the fall stem, so let's do this. I have all these bruises, you can see, so I definitely don't want to go in a bruise. I'm going to stay two finger widths. Let's go. That's fine. Running out of real estate here. 80 units going in. Five, four, three, two. Perfect. Woo, trigger shot done. Let's do this on Wednesday. I have to do another one tomorrow at the doctor's office because it's at 8 a.m. But my appointment for blood work is at 7.45. So we're gonna do this at 8 a.m. Tomorrow, 40 units. So today is March 22nd. I got the green light yesterday that we're gonna do the egg retrieval tomorrow, March 23rd. Very excited. We saw nine follicles that were over 17 millimeters. So we'll see what happens when they go in there. One thing that you can have to remember is that they can't guarantee how many follicles they're going to get. They can get way more because there could be some that weren't seen on the ultrasound or they could get less depending on how they are able to get to the ovaries. So they have to be able to get to my right and my left ovary and see what they can get. So just very excited that we're at this day, taking it step by step. Step one was the hormone stim. Step two is the egg retrieval. And then step three is the results of how many get fertilized and how many um, are chromosomally normal. So that's where we're at, but I am feeling good. I am super bloated, not pregnant, just super bloated. Um, I had to take the Prejnol and the um, and Falstim as well as the Lupralide yesterday. And I also had to take that Lupralide that I just showed you um, at the office today at 8 a.m. exactly. We have to be at the hospital or sorry, the office at 6 a.m. tomorrow and it's at a site that is not my typical office because I went so long in my cycle that another location is the location where they're doing egg retrievals. So my doctor is meeting me at that location to do my egg retrieval. I'm so grateful that she's driving the hour with me um, to meet me there and so that they can get the eggs out at 7 a.m. on the dot and I'll be keeping you posted but I am feeling okay. I'm just super tired. My boobs are actually really sore today. It actually started happening a couple days ago. I just feel like blah, bloated, tired, fatigued. So using this day to really just rest, relax. My husband will probably take Ryan to um, swim class and just really just get mentally ready for a procedure tomorrow. My fourth gyne OB procedure in two, a little over two years, but feeling very hopeful and can't wait to update you tomorrow. We are at the clinic waiting for the nurse to call so that I can go upstairs and just really grateful for my parents to be here. So they are home with Ryan and going to pick, um, drop him off to school, take care of all of his stuff in the morning. Um, and yeah, we'll update soon. The procedure's done and I had Versed, Propofol and Fentanyl and I feel great. Like, so happy <laughs> these meds always make me happy um it was like about 15 minutes got my IV in feeling so good um and relaxed and I'm just gonna rest but it was very short I'll find out tomorrow how many follicles or eggs eggs they were able to get but I'm just feeling truly this thank you to Modi Toys for sending me this um this was actually like a while back but I'm feeling so good. So I am so sleepy. Probably the medicine from the anesthesia and also being up early. But we got 12 eggs, which is awesome because they saw nine follicles that were large. So very happy and hopeful. Um, so the rest of the day recommendation is bed rest. So again, have my parents here, which is very helpful. And eating a high protein diet. Um, I have to take some antibiotics, doxycycline. Um, the rest of the, um, the day today and then tomorrow. And then just taking it easy, no heavy lifting, no deci um, important decision making. <laughs> I thought that was funny on the instructions. Um, but yeah, just taking it easy and then um, just very excited about the 12 follicles. And we'll find out in a week how many fertilized and made it through um, into basically being embryos. So every day they look as to how they grow. Tomorrow we'll find out how many fertilize and then by next Wednesday, so a week from today, 
we'll find out how many um, are embryos and then we'll go from there. But I'm just so happy the day is done. It is about um, 9.30, so got home 9.30 and I am just so ready to sleep. So I'm gonna sleep and then we'll update um, later tonight just to tell you how I'm doing, but um, definitely a little cramping right now in the like, you know, pelvic area. I'm um, nothing major, but feeling feeling the best of any procedure I've done, guy and OB related, um, but just tired and ready to um, just rest and move on from injections. So today was supposed to be a relaxing day after the egg retrieval and I'm feeling good. Um, cramping is definitely the major side effect. Like feel like you have like a good period, but nothing really major. Um, a little bit of nausea. So a reminder, definitely make sure you eat something. I was nauseous because I just didn't eat. I came home and I was so tired and I fell asleep. And so then I woke up at 1.30 PM feeling super nauseous and then ate and felt a little, felt a lot better. So make sure you do that. But, um, so a random side note is that we found out from our landlord, we live in a rental um, townhouse, that he's selling our townhouse to somebody else and we have to be out in 90 days. So this is not something that I expected on our egg retrieval day. Um, honestly, it was been a very overwhelming day. Um, I was happy, obviously, with egg retrieval and I was like, why the heck is this happening? But that is for another vlog, another time. But I'll find out tomorrow how many um, eggs got fertilized. And like I said, we had 12, but doing okay. And basically the moral of the story is that life will always throw surprises, even when you think you're in the clear, because that's just what life does. But I'll be updating tomorrow. It actually might be my final update for this vlog as to how many um, fertilized eggs we have. Um, and then in my next vlog on my fertility journey, I'll be doing how many embryos we have and what we decide to do with transfer and when. But that's the update for now. Oh, and enjoying some butter pecan haagen ice cream because that's what the doctor recommended. So today is March 24th and it has been a whirlwind of 24 hours. I had my procedure in the morning for the egg retrieval and then we found out we have to leave our house in 90 days, which seems absurd and crazy and just kind of really clouded this kind of positive day that we were having yesterday with the egg retrieval, them getting out 12 eggs, but really hoping for some good news on Tuesday. We found out that of the 12 eggs they were able to get out, eight were viable or mature and four got fertilized. So now we wait six days to see how many reach the blastocyst phase. It's really hard because we know that you lose embryos along the way, right? Not all of them are going to turn into embryos. So just hoping that maybe we'll have good numbers here. Maybe we'll have at least the one that we're hoping for, the one embryo so that we can have a transfer but it's just feeling very heavy right now, um, especially with the house situation. And I don't know what's gonna happen, but all I can do is hope. And that brings me to, you know, five tips that if you're going through this hormone stimulation phase, egg retrieval phase, just things that I hope that you remember. This will be my last vlog, a portion of the vlog. Um, I plan on updating in the next phase. Hopefully I have good news to update, but some things to take home. Number one, everyone is different. I feel like when I went through this, um, you know, I would talk to a lot of friends, everyone's body is gonna respond differently to the hormone medicine. So it's really important that you have a doctor that you trust. Obviously someone who's reputable, works at a center that has a good success rate. It's important. They can't guarantee whether this is gonna be successful, right? We know that. But if you trust your doctor, hopefully that'll give you some peace of mind when you're going through the process. On day 10, I had no follicles that were over 17 millimeters. And most of my friends did. And I felt very alone. I felt like, is this going to work? And I just trusted my doctor and we ended up getting 12. And other women may have 20, other women may have 15, you know, 15, five, you never know, but trust your doctor. Number two is if you're doing this and you have an older sibling already, like you have a child, you're gonna need some help. Doing this already when you don't have a child is difficult emotionally and with the time, but when you have a child, you're gonna need some help. So we had my mom and dad come um, we knew that we were going to be doing this and I really, really am so grateful for that because I don't know how I would have done any of this if I didn't have their help for, to drop off Ryan because my husband has such a sporadic schedule. So really, really, really remember that you need some help. You can't do this alone. It's also just an emotional roller coaster. So you saw me in this vlog, like I really have gone through the lowest of lows and highest of highs in the last two weeks. I was hopeful. I was defeated. I feel like, is this going to work? I still don't know if it's going to work, but all you really have is hope. 
All you really have to remember is that it is very normal for you to feel overwhelmed. The hormones don't help. The uncertainty doesn't help. All of that is combined to make this feel just so heavy. But just remember that that's normal and lean on people that support you. I found a great community of friends who've gone through IVF and it did help. But remember, another tip is that try not to compare your journey to other people's because even if you have that support, their journey is going to look very different. They're going to have different success rates in terms of how many follicles, how many went through genetic testing, whatever. It's going to look very different. And finally, you just need one embryo. I'm hoping that the next update I can give you all will tell you that I got the one embryo that we needed. It feels so hard because you just can't control it. But I'm leaving it up to fate. I'm leaving it up that we, you know, we did everything. We just got to hope that we get that one embryo that we need to transfer. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. Share it if you found it helpful. Share it if it resonated with you. And make sure to subscribe because this is how you're going to stay up to date on the other vlogs I put out. And I'm hoping that I can give you some good news to come.